Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be shooting a four panel mosaic image in the uh, constellation of Auriga. For those of you who are familiar or not familiar with that particular area of the night sky, uh, that contains the Flaming Star Nebula, the Tadpole Nebula, and the Spider Nebula. So, uh, yeah, four panels of a three nebula. Hey, you forgot about me. If you'd like to see how I capture that, how I use uh, this setup here, um, to image those targets, then uh, keep watching. I've opened up Sky Guide here so you can see where the uh, constellation is. So we're looking in the eastern sky, uh, looking up at about six o'clock uh, in the evening on the 24th of January. And you can see the constellation Riga here. Uh, so in, in that constellation of Riga, uh, mentioned earlier on, you've got the Tadpole Nebula, you've got the Spider Nebula, and also you've got the Flaming Star Nebula. Uh, so a very interesting part of the night sky. One of the reasons for choosing this particular target at this time of year is as the night progresses, uh, the target gets higher and higher into the night sky. That circle is the... Uh, the zenith, so it's the highest point in the night sky. So in the relatively early evening, uh, heading up to midnight, the target is almost as high as it's possibly ever going to be, so I'm shooting through the least amount of atmosphere and benefit from better seeing. So here's my uh, setup for tonight. Uh, the mount is the ZWO AM5 harmonic drive mount. Uh, it's a recent purchase of mine. Um, and I've been getting to grips with it and uh, enjoying uh, its portability. You can see it just comes on a lightweight carbon fibre tripod, um, nice and easy to uh, move in and out of the house whenever the weather turns. Uh, I've also got the Redcat 51 uh, telescope, which is a 250mm refractor telescope. And then at the back here, through all of the cables, I've got the uh, ASI 183 MC Pro, so it's a one shot colour camera. Um, which pairs up nicely with this telescope. Attached to the handle, I've got the ASI Air Pro, uh, doing all of the controlling, guiding, slewing, etc., etc., and also the mosaic planning. And then at the top here, we've got the guide scope. It's a ZWO 30 f4 mini scope, and the guide camera is the ASI 120mm mini. So that's my setup. Um, everything's already. Uh, polar aligned and everything from previous sessions, so uh, I just need to wait for it to get dark and when it's dark we can then start setting up the mosaic plan. So uh, why would you want to actually shoot a mosaic image? With telescopes you don't have a zoom lens like you would with a normal camera, so um, yeah if you want to be able to get in closer you've got to have a telescope focal length that's a uh, higher focal length and if you want to move back you've got to have a lower focal length. We can't do things like move the planet back a few hundred light years to be able to get a, a wider field of view, uh, so you've got two options, you either get a different telescope or another lens or you can shoot mosaic. So the, the second reason is that you might want to get more detail. So you can shoot a wider field of view with a wider angle telescope or lens and get in more field of view, um, but you then sacrifice that, that finer detail. Uh, if you're shooting for Instagram, that doesn't really make much difference. It, who's gonna be able to see it on a tiny little image on a phone? However, if you want to print that view out and you want to have the detail in that view as well, then shooting a mosaic with say two, four times the amount of detail, you're gonna be able to print uh, larger images. So there's definite benefits there. And then the third um, <laughs> the third option is basically maybe you're just uh, that sort of person that likes uh, stress, pain, processing pain, imaging pain. Uh, you just like that kind of thing. And therefore that's why you would do that. Mosaics are more difficult. You've got to contend with, depending on the number of panels, you've got to times that by the integration time that you would normally get with a single frame. If you want to get a good level of detail and a good signal to noise ratio, but also you've got to contend with the weather as well. And I think this is partly why when I shot my first mosaic, I said to myself, I'm not going to do that again because that was just ridiculous. Certainly shooting for a video as well to try and get an outcome at the end, it was a little bit stressful. 
So uh, some tips for actually shooting your mosaic. The first tip that I would give is actually aim to shoot all of the panels of your mosaic, assuming it's not 64 panels. Shoot those panels all in the same night and then on subsequent night, nights, shoot those same panels again. Uh, the benefits of doing this means that you get similar lighting conditions across all four panels in my situation. When it comes to um, calibrating and merging these images together, um, or merging the, the stacked mosaic frames together, they're easier to actually match. They, they don't have vastly different um, brightness levels and things like that. The, uh, the, the second uh, tip for this would be to make sure that you overlap the panels at least 10%. You need a good amount of that overlap so that they can be blended and, and merged together. The third point is actually when you're planning your uh, mosaic panels and you're using the, whether it's Telescopius, but in this video's instance, it would be the ASI Air device. Um, look for any bright stars and, and try and arrange your panels such that those bright stars don't fit into that overlap. Uh, because when it comes to actually merging the mosaic together and you've got bright stars, sometimes you get this weird pinching um, effect, which it's just going to be even more of a nightmare to process. So yeah, definitely avoid that. Uh, the next two tips are probably really just ger generic tips. It will be um, aim for a target that's as high up in the night sky as possible, so you're shooting through as little atmosphere as possible. And if you're doing that time and time again, then you're going to get better quality images. You will typically be shooting over a number of nights to get a, a good mosaic image. So when you're doing your planning and your imaging, uh, just keep an eye out for the moon because, yeah, it does come back. If you start out for, with a, a nice new moon and then you've got a gap in terms of forecast and, and cloud and all of that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, just factor that in because then the brightness levels on uh, subsequent images with the moon are just going to ruin your images. Yeah, and related to that point, uh, yeah, just look at the forecast. They can be a bit unreliable, but occasionally you do get those uh, those weeks where there are a number of clear nights ahead of you. So you can sort of plan and say, right, okay, yep, I'm going to give the mosaic image a try. Yeah, just shoot consecutive nights, which is definitely the best. Now what we want to do is go into plan by tapping on preview, tapping on plan, and then hitting the sky atlas again. And so what we can do here is tap on mosaic. We've now got our four panel mosaic image. Let's scrap what we've got in the plan. Let's clear that plan. So here we've now got, you can see the blue area is where the scope's currently pointing. These red boxes are showing what the panels are actually going to look like. Just lining up these panels such that those bright stars aren't in the um, overlap area and I've got all of the targets I want in each of the panels. And then all I need to do now is just tap on plan. You can see that those um, four panels have been added to the plan and can come out of here Tap on the burger menu underneath the plan. You can see each of these uh, four panels have been added to the plan itself. Uh, if you tap on detail, we can then add a new sequence. We're going to go with 300 second exposures, repeat for 10 exposures at a time, hit OK. And then we can do copy schedule to all. So tap on that. Uh, shooting schedules for all targets will be replaced with the M38 1.1 schedule. Disabled targets will be disabled, sorry, enabled. Tap OK. So if we come out of here now, we should now have 10 exposures of 300 seconds for each of these different panels. And you can also see that each of those panels has been enabled. So when you've got this plan here as well, if you ever want to uh, see exactly what that panel is imaging, you can just tap on Sky Atlas for, for that panel, and then it will zoom straight to uh, that section of sky, and then highlight what that will be actually imaging. So we're going to come out of the plan, just check that the camera is on um, unity gain, cooling down to 10 degrees, Everything's good there, everything's all connected, it's all ready to go. The camera's cooled down to minus 10, and then we literally just hit the 
the shutter button underneath the plan and then you're presented with this menu here so um, auto guiding is on auto meridian flip for auto calling so we don't need to worry about any of those things everything's all going to be done for us I won't need to recalibrate the guiding because I haven't changed the scope in any way I haven't changed the orientation of the camera so everything is good there as well at the end of this imaging session and turn off the cooler go to home position uh, I decide not to uh, shut down the ASI air but you could do that as well just hit OK and now the scope will automatically slew to the first panel and then take an image center it plate solve check that it's definitely there and it's just waiting for guiding now we can just open up guiding to see what's going on there wait for that to load so you can see it's automatically picked a guide star for me yep, it's actually guiding already and you can see the uh, guiding errors in the graph at the bottom there just waiting for that to settle. And side here you can see that the imaging has already started to take place. So um, yeah, it's at 276 seconds. Uh, complete that first image.